All righty. Okay. So could you please introduce yourself? I am Joyce Itrata, is my maiden name, Walksmith today. And uh, I graduated in 1967. Actually, I uh, attended um, Pacific University from 1964 to 1967. And I graduated with a speech therapy degree, as well as at that time, you had a com combination of secondary education. So you could teach in the high school and middle school. So that's what I did. So how were you involved in NHOH? How, did, how was I involved in yeah, Pacific? Oh, okay. And, yeah, and in NHOH as well. Oh, sure. Well, at that time, we had just, um, I think, 30 students from Hawaii. So we kind of hung out together because we wanted the culture to stay there. We, and I came from a very small community, so I love people. But I knew that I wanted to be a part of a club. So being a part of the Hawaiian club was just a chance to have fun and relax and still meet other people. And I, I really enjoyed uh, the, the laughter. As I look back, we laughed at everything because everything was new. Snow was new. Cold was new. Um, going to the cafeteria was new. And, and uh, Lorraine Dodo, she was from um, the Big Island. We ended up being roommates. They said they would never put two Hawaiians together. Well, I don't know. We became very close friends. And um, she, she and I would come back from eating in the cafeteria, the student center. And we would cry together because we didn't have good rice, the sticky rice. And we missed it because we had it almost every meal in Hawaii. But I look back at that and those are just fun things. One of the fun things I'd like to say is at that time, we had an RA that would come and clean, uh, check our rooms. And we were in Walter Hall and we left out some kimchi and, and some pickled, uh, what is it, pickle turnip, we would say, daikon. And the room was smelly and we got 50 demerits. She and I had to clean the halls, wiping it down and for to get over 50 demerits. Of course, we blamed each other for not closing the kimchi bottle and the daikon bottle. But those were the kinds of things that I look back that is so funny. I finally saw her in Honolulu this year after 50 years, 54 years. and. We laughed over that and, and laughed about how we blamed each other. <laughs> so um, tell us about Luau during your time. How okay. did you um, get involved there? Yeah, um, by when we came in 64, I think they've already had like three or four. Mm -hmm. So we were the young ones and we followed whatever they said to do. And <clears throat> if they needed uh, singing, that was great. Or, and it was very simple at that time. Our leader was Dr. Scheller and I know he's been passed and, and so he was so much fun. He was such a loud spoken man. So he would direct us and we followed, you know, we're very, uh, follow through with whatever he said, and he wanted us to succeed. So the first flew out in 66 uh, that I was the coordinator in, um, I decided that I didn't want just rice plopped on the plate, you know, for the luau. So I convinced my classmates to make uh, musubi, which is not the, the original musubi where you put something in the middle, but it's just in a cone shape. So we had to make hundreds of this. And I can't tell you, by 11 o'clock, everybody was kind of saying, Itrata, what stupid idea you had in doing this. And I felt so bad because I was tired along with them. But once you start a few hundred, we had to finish. And we did. We finished it, but laughed and laughed and laughed. And so for the last next two years, I got teased. Hey, Itrata, you want to make some musubi? Oh, no, no. Next time, next time. The second story about the luau was because of the entertainment, um, uh, Dayton Aruda and I were asked to sing the Hawaiian wedding song. And Dayton was somebody who was always teasing and so was I. We got up on the stage and looked at each other and started laughing. We couldn't even begin the song. So thank goodness, I think Esmond Chung was the uh, announcer. He got up, he kind of covered us for us. And, and then we went off stage, got our laughs out 
came back and I took, I said, this is serious now, David, stop it. We got to do this. And so, <laughs> so we did, we finished the song, but I tell you, that was so funny. The third one that I think back about um, being part of the, the luau is the after party because we had all the real Hawaiian food that was graciously sent by our parents. I think I will be forever grateful for our parents who helped out with each luau like it is today. Great. Um, what, what did you gain from NHOH and how did it help you after you graduated? I think probably I know that I uh, in high school was a leader, um, but I think it gave me opportunities uh, in leadership and working on a team and how to um, be a part of sharing the culture of Hawaii and to maintain that because in several years ago when I was asked to be queen for the luau at Pacific University, I just was overwhelmed with the excellence and the authenticity that has developed through the years with the Luau and to see these kids and it made me realize how much I had gained and to see my um, grandchildren, Kai, Hannah, Kaleo, Caleb and Chloe, along with our kids, Ted and Stephanie and uh, Keone and Michelle, just to have them there and to see that maybe they, when you're in college, you don't see the full value but whatever you've learned through your college years is given to your families and to your community. And it gives you that giving spirit, you know, that real Ohana giving spirit. So I think that would be it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, I think we got it.